Okay, good morning to everybody. Uh, first, I would like to, to thank the, the organizers, uh, and in particular Hugo, uh, for this uh, nice workshop. I'm very glad to be here and to talk to you about uh, relatively recent works that uh, we have been doing on these uh, non-interacting uh, trapped fermions. Uh, and one of the interesting issues there uh, has to deal with, uh, with large deviations, and in particular in the context of extreme value statistics. Um, so this, the, 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 the content of this talk is uh, essentially uh, based on uh, collaborations with, this, uh, uh, with these people. So we actually started uh, to work on this, uh, on this, uh, on this problem uh, with uh, David Dean uh, uh, in Bordeaux and uh, Pierre Le Doussal. Uh, as well as Satya, uh, and uh, we actually uh, eventually uh, uh, wrote up a series of papers with the kind of review that you can find here on this uh, uh, fermions, uh, fermions problem. And more recently, uh, we worked on these uh, extreme value statistics and large deviations, and in particular, uh, we worked with uh, Bertrand, Bertrand Lacroix Chetouane, who is here, uh, who is doing his PhD with us. And, uh, I will mainly talk about, about this, uh, about these recent, uh, recent works. So as you probably have, uh, have heard about, uh, they have uh, uh, tremendous progress, uh, uh, experimental ones, uh, in the manipulations of uh, cold atoms, and in particular, uh, this really now uh, allows to, to, to investigate with high precision uh, the, the, the interplay between quantum and thermal uh, fluctuations in this, uh, uh, in this model. Um, and a common feature of all these, uh, these experiments is that uh, if you want to, to really uh, um, make measurements on your, uh, on your, cold, on your cold atoms, uh, basically you have to localize them so that they do not uh, escape somehow. And to do that, you have to confine them. And the way you do that uh, is by imposing a, a confining potential. So typically, I mean, this is a cartoon of a harmonic potential. Um, which you can design uh, using uh, optic techniques, uh, magneto-optic techniques. Uh, and that actually uh, will be quite, quite interesting and important for us. I will come to this in a moment. Now there is another, uh, so uh, the, 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 this, this, these techniques and in particular this confinement uh, has led to the, the, the development for fermions to what is called this uh, quantum Fermi gas microscopes. Uh, this, was, this picture is taken from uh, uh, papers in the group of uh, Greiner at Harvard. Uh, there are now a uh, few of, uh, of these uh, microscopes uh, in the world, and in particular uh, in the group of Emmanuel Bloch uh, at Munich, with whom we are uh, discussing now. So basically what they are really able to do is, is, to, is, to, is to take a snapshot of, of your Fermi cloud. Right? So they have your, these atoms, so these are real atoms that you see there. Uh, and you are able to, to look at them, and that means that you have now uh, a very direct way to, to, to look at the special fluctuations of these, uh, uh, of these, uh, of these fermions. And of course, uh, since they are looking at very low temperature, uh, these special fluctuations are mainly due to quantum fluctuations. And that's what we want to, to describe. Now, there is yet another interesting feature, uh, which is the fact that uh, they have these this very nice techniques, which they call this fetch bar or resonance, that they can really tune the interactions between these particles, and they are now able to, to reach the non-interacting non limit, uh, which somehow allows to treat the, the, the real quantum, quantum effects. So in, they, are, they are really able to design uh, and to look at uh, non-interacting Fermi gas, uh, and as we know, even in the absence of interactions, uh, these uh, uh, many-body systems, quantum many-body systems, uh, have already very nice, uh, uh, very nice behaviors for bosons. Of course, uh, there is this famous Bose-Einstein condensation. Now, for fermions, uh, even for non-interacting fermions, because of the Fermi principle, Fermi exclu Pauli exclu uh, sorry, Pauli exclusion principle, uh, this acts as an effective interaction somehow. Uh, and this, this leads to a very rich uh, uh, quantum, uh, quantum physics uh, uh, that I will uh, describe uh, in, in a while. So, as I said, uh, this, uh, this, the, these atoms, these, these fermions, because now I will mo mostly talk about fermions, they are usually confined by a trap. And the effect of a trap is actually quite, quite important in the sense that this creates an edge beyond which the, the density of, of particles essentially vanishes, right? So that, that means that 
the, the, the density uh, has a finite support, if you want. Uh, and most of the, 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 the questions that people have addressed up to now have, have dealt with the, 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 the physics that happens close to the, the center of the trap, uh, namely that I will talk, uh, that I will, uh, I mean, uh, that I will just uh, talk here about uh, the bulk, bulk physics. And this physics is relatively standard to describe, and this can be done using uh, the standard tool of uh, many body physics, uh, like uh, local density approximation, uh, Thomas Fermi uh, approximations, this kind of uh, traditional many body physics, and in particular, an important feature of, of, of the, 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 the properties that you have in the bulk is that the, 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 the system is, is, is locally invariant uh, under translations, so that it sort of ignores the fact that it is confined, and things uh, become much, 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 much simpler to describe. Now, as I said, uh, because of, the, uh, of this confining trap, uh, the gas here has an edge, so that means that if you really look far away from the, from the center of the trap, the density is, uh, is, is, is decreasing to zero, so the density is much, is much smaller, and therefore the, 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 your system turns out to be much more sensitive to, to fluctuations, the quantum or thermal fluctuations. And this physics at the edge uh, cannot be described by the standard tools of uh, many body physics, and this was actually pointed out in this nice abstract by Walter Cohn um, and Matson. Uh, by saying that the traditional starting point for density-based many-body theories of inhomogeneous systems is an appropriate near electronic nature's. So that's, uh, uh, in, the, in that paper, actually, they, they sort of uh, uh, tried to, 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 to say a few, a few properties uh, about the, 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 the edge physics of this electron gas. Uh, and, but this was really very preliminary and also, to some extent, hand-waving. Uh, now, what I want to, to, to show you, and that... that that's what we have been uh, showing during these this last years, uh, together with uh, Satya, David, and Pierre, is that uh, random matrix theory uh, and uh, determinantal processes uh, are actually the ideal tools to study these edge properties. And uh, this has led uh, to very nice predictions at the edge of this uh, Fermi gas. And in particular, uh, this allows to describe uh, universal edge properties, uh, which eventually might be uh, observe, observed in, in, in experiments. So let me just try to, to show you uh, why uh, RMT, random matrix theory, is actually relevant uh, in this context. Uh, probably the, 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 the simplest example to see that uh, is to look at the, the system of fermions in a harmonic potential. I know that Seth has probably already discussed this problem in his, in his lectures uh, last week. Uh, but let me just remind you how it works. So let's start with a very uh, simple textbook uh, problem where you have uh, just a one particle uh, in a quantum potential. Okay, so you have this particle which is described by the, this Hamiltonian, and what quantum mechanics tells you is that uh, you have to diagonalize this, this, uh, this, this operator, and uh, uh, the, 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 the eigenstates of this, uh, of this Hamiltonian with, that, with these boundary conditions are simply given by uh, this form there, so this, the, the, these eigenvectors are just labeled by an integer, uh, and uh, the eigenvalues are, have this form, h bar omega k plus half, very, very well known, and uh, this phi k of x has this, this structure up to a normalization factor. They have this uh, Gaussian, Gaussian term here, uh, 1 over alpha is, is, is just the, 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 um, the length scale, the typical length scale of, 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 of your problem, so you have this Gaussian factor times this uh, polynomial, which is just this Hermit polynomial of, of uh, index k. So this is the one particle problem, very, very simple. Now, when you have fermions, uh, what, 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 uh, what you have to do, uh, if you have n fermions, forget about the spins, so you just have these n fermions, and because of the uh, Fermi princi Pauli principle, well, you, just, you will put your first fermion, so I'm, I'm looking at the, the ground state, so you just put your first fermion in the lowest level, then the second fermions on the, on the first excited state, and so on. Okay? So at the end of, when you have these n fermions, they just populate this, the n first levels, uh, single particle levels. And because your uh, wave function uh, of the, the, the n particle wave function has to be completely uh, anti-symmetric with respect to a permutation of uh, two particles, uh, the way you construct this wave function uh, is that 
write this uh, slatter determinant uh, built from the single particle wave function. Okay, so that's very, uh, very standard uh, uh, quantum mechanics. Uh, and here what you are doing is that you are just writing this determinant, which is, which is built from this n first uh, Fermi, uh, sorry, Hermit functions. Okay. Now let's, uh, let's just do some uh, uh, simple manipulation of this determinant. Well, first thing is that uh, because of this uh, uh, simple factorization, you can just use the multilinearity of the determinant to get the uh, Gaussian factors outside. And now you, just, you are left with this determinant of Hermit polynomials, but then you have a determinant of at the, the end first Hermit polynomials, so you can just do some linear combinations of, uh, arrows, of rows and lines, and eventually uh, you can uh, write it uh, as a van der Mond determinant, and you end up with, with this formula. So usually in random matrix theory, I mean, since you are, there are some RMT experts here, usually in RMT you start with that and you write this. Now you see that uh, here in quantum mechanics, basically, uh, you naturally arrive with this uh, determinant of Hermit polynomials, and uh, you have actually now this, uh, uh, this von der Mond term. So as Satya mentioned in his, in his lectures, uh, this actually, uh, in this uh, fermionic uh, picture, you have a very concrete and nice physical interpretation of this Van der Monde uh, determinant, which in the RMT language arrives as a, as, a, as a Jacobian, which might not be that uh, physical to, 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 to feel. Now, once you have this, this expression, uh, of course, in quantum mechanics, the, 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 the physical observable is the square of the modular square of, the, of, of your wave function. And if you just take the modular square of this guy, well, you immediately obtain this, so you have uh, the product or you have the square of the van der Mond terms, and you have this product of, of, of Gaussians. Now, this expression uh, is, uh, should be fam familiar. At least, uh, it turns out that this is exactly uh, the same expression that you obtain for the eigenvalues of an n by n random matrix belonging to the Gaussian unitary ensemble. Okay, so you take a Hermitian a matrix, matrix n by n, and you, in, you put the, as entries Gaussian random variables, both real and, uh, and complex. And of course, because it's a mission, the eigenvalues are real. And you can compute explicitly the joint PDF of these lambda i's, which are these eigenvalues. And you see that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between these two guys. Okay. So that's quite nice because you see that it gives uh, a very nice uh, application, I mean, or incarnation, if you want, physical inca incarnation of GUE in terms of these fermions. Uh, now, uh, the nice thing is that uh, uh, that, means, that also means that you can use all the powerful tools that people have developed in, G, in, in random matrices to describe the special properties of, of fermions in a harmonic trap. And this has been done in a series of papers, and we have uh, exploited this uh, quite a bit uh, in various contexts, and in also in particular, as Satya mentioned right before, in the context of uh, entanglement entropy in that paper with Calambres and Le Dussal. But you can actually do many other uh, uh, things with it. So that's the, 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 the situation at t equals zero. And uh, if you want to look at the edge properties, of course, there is a, a natural observable to look at, uh, which is to look at rightmost fermion. Okay, so what, so you suppose that you take a picture of, of, your, of, your, of your particle, as you can do in these uh, experiments with a Fermi microscope, and you look at the fluctuations of the rightmost fermion, now, because of this one-to-one -one correspondence with RMT, uh, this rightmost, the position of this rightmost fermion will be described uh, by the largest eigenvalue of, of GUE. That means that uh, uh, the typical fluctuations will be governed by the tracy rhythm distribution. Okay? Now, uh, tracy rhythm distribution actually have, uh, uh, as you probably have heard about uh, in Satya's talk again, uh, have popped up in many, uh, many systems uh, in physics, uh, ranging from uh, combinatorics, uh, uh, KPZ uh, equations, directed polymers, and many others. Now, somehow these fermions uh, offer a very, um, maybe the simplest uh, uh, example where the, 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 the tracy rhythm distribution uh, could, be, could be observed. Now, since we are, uh, 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 since, uh, well, let me just, so the, this tracy rhythm distribution is, is, is a cumulative distribution, so uh, it's, uh, I will just denote it by uh, F2 of X, uh, so that's, uh, 
Again, uh, that's a cumulative distribution. And uh, it's a cumulative distribution. So, uh, well, okay, it's, it's a function that uh, eventually uh, looks like this and saturates saturate site one for large, for large arguments. Uh, okay, for later purpose, uh, I don't know, probably Satya said a few things about this, but it's for later purpose, I just mentioned that uh, this Tracy Rhenum distribution actually have, has several uh, analytical representation. Uh, it can be represented in terms of uh, Penlevé functions, but it can also be written as a Fredholm determinant. Uh, and I just uh, write it uh, in this way here. Uh, okay, so this is, uh, this is the Fredholm determinant. Uh, so that means that, uh, okay, so this Px is just a projector on x plus infinity. So it essentially is a theta function uh, uh, on x plus infinity. Well, I just want to, so basically this is defined through uh, a central object, which uh, I'll be, uh, I mean, uh, I will come to, to, to it later on, but I just want to, to emphasize it here at this stage. Uh, this can be expressed in terms of this, uh, what is called the Eric kernel, uh, which is just this guy. Right, okay, so that's the case uh, where you Again, in our, in our fermion problem, that we are looking at this uh, V of X, which is harmonic, okay. So, this, these are the, the typical fluctuations, but uh, we have, you have seen that since uh, we are uh, in, uh, uh, I mean, one of the main topic of this, uh, this workshop program here is, is on the large deviations. Uh, the, large, the large deviations are also known. That means that, uh, Essentially, the, the Tracy rhythm, so this is the, the density of the fermions, so the rightmost this density is just the Wigner semicircle. Now, your rightmost fermion will just sit very close to the edge of the Wigner semicircle, and the typical fluctuations are very narrow. I mean, they actually take place on a very narrow scale, which is of the order n to the power minus one-sixth, and they are described by this Tracy rhythm distribution, which I just depicted. So this F2 here uh, is precisely what I wrote there, okay? Now, you can also uh, uh, investigate and describe quite precisely what's, what is happening if uh, you look at the fluctuations very far away from this edge. So basically, uh, if you look at what, ha what happens uh, when m is much smaller, so when the, 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 the x max is much smaller than square root of 2n, then this actually dis decays at exponential minus n square, and the origin of this n square is again that uh, you have uh, this uh, uh, van der Mond term, so you have the, 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 if when you do that, you really need to reorganize completely, completely the, uh, the, the density of, of eigenvalues, and because of the van der Mond term, or the, the logarithmic interactions, if you want, uh, this costs uh, really a term which is proportional to n square, while, on, and this actually is described by this form here, so this is the left tail, and this is described by this exponential minus n square phi minus, now, on the other hand, that means uh, if I look at the other side, on the right side, uh, if I look at the, pro the, 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 the configuration where x max is much uh, bigger or larger than square root of 2n, then basically what is happening is that you only have a single particle, which is out of the Wigner C, and you have the, 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 the energy that you have to, uh, to pay for that is an interaction between this single charge and the n minus one other charge which are left in this semicircle, and this costs you an energy which is proportional to n. I'm sure that Satya discussed this uh, in detail. Um, and this leads to this, uh, to this, to this, to this, uh, to this behavior, one minus exponential minus phi plus. There is a one here because I'm looking at the cumulative distribution, okay? Great, so uh, you see that you have these three regimes, uh, the left one, the Tracy rhythm, part, which is the center, and the right one. And what you can show is that there is actually a very, very smooth matching between these two parts, okay? So uh, this really, this, 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 this part here very smooth, is very, I mean, matches very smoothly with the central part, and the same here, right? That's what I mean by that. Now, if I'm back to, to the fermion problem, 
Uh, of course, I have, I've shown you that this, you know, I mean, that, that, that there is this one-to-one -one mapping to RMT uh, for firm fermions in a harmonic trap. This mapping only works, of course, for the harmonic potential. That means V of X proportional to X squared. But what you can show is that this scenario is quite universal for smooth one-dimensional potential, provided, so typically, I mean, if you look at this V of X proportional to X to the P, uh, so smooth confining potential, then basically you will have uh, such a scenario with a central part which will be still described by Tracy rhythm, so the central part is universal, and uh, that means that the local correlations will be described by this Eric kernel. Uh, now, in general, you would expect to have uh, this kind of, so if you look at the left and right large deviations, uh, you, you would expect to have this, this kind of form. Now, uh, as, is it, as it is the case in RMT, uh, these uh, rate functions are actually non-universal, and, they, they, usually, and they, they will typically depend on V of X, and computing them for general V of X is actually a quite, I mean, is an open question. Uh, it's usually quite hard to do. Um, uh, and we don't have really, uh, I mean, at the moment, at least, we don't have a very clear idea how, 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 how to do that for the quantum problem. Now, what I want to discuss now uh, are different kind of universality classes. That means uh, what happens uh, if V of X is different from that. Okay. So let's stay in 1D uh, and look at the very even simpler problem where you put your fermions in a hard box. Okay, so uh, I just have a V of X, which is zero uh, inside this uh, interval, minus R plus R. And this is just infinite outside. Okay, and you put the n fermions there. So the physics is quite simple. What will happen is that if you look at the density, basically the density will be uniform, and uh, there will be actually uh, 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 only deviations from this uniform behavior only at the edge here, at the edges, uh, because the, the wave functions need to vanish at zero. So the density will vanish. And there will be, this will create some oscillations here, which are damped when you get far away from the edges. But uh, what is happening there, I mean, of course, you can redo the, com the full computations. Uh, in this case, the, the, the wave functions are just given by sine functions. And so you have a slatter determinant of sine functions to compute. And if you compute this, uh, it turns out that this uh, determinant can be computed explicitly. And eventually, what you get is that uh, the, the the modulus square of the wave function is given by another random matrix model. So you can r still write this psi naught square as this form here. So you have a van der Mond term in terms of this variable. So it looks very much like um, RMT again. And you have some sort of potential. Uh, but of course, here, the, the, v, the Vj here are bounded, right? Because of the sign, they are between minus 1 and plus 1. So it's a model which is quite different from, uh, uh, from GUE. And this model is actually is known in, in the literature as the Jacob Unitary Ensemble. And it's well known in RMT uh, that it will lead to quite different behaviors, uh, in particular if you look at the edge. So that means that if you look at the edge properties of this, of this uh, Fermi gas here, they will be quite different and they will not be described by this airy, uh, airy kernel, but by another kernel. That's uh, something that we have recently uh, investigated. We are, probably, we are probably not the first one to, uh, to, to, to notice this, this connection. There were, before us, Forrester had worked, out, had worked out these kind of connections. And recently, there has been also some interest in the, in the math literature. Uh, O'Connell and collaborators uh, have, has looked, have looked at this uh, 1D, uh, 1D model related to this compact group in RMT. So again, uh, you can use, in this case, you can also again use RMT techniques to compute the distribution of, the, of your rightmost fermion. And uh, the result is that, uh, essentially, so again, of course, if you look at the distribution of X max, it has to be bounded by R, okay? It cannot, uh, uh, because in this case, you really have what is called a hard edge. I mean, your particle cannot move to the right of plus R. Now, the scale of, the typical scale of fluctuations is simply 1 over n. I mean, 1 over n is just, is, is basically the, the, the uh, 1 over kf, uh, in, this, uh, in this case, kf be, being the Fermi momentum. I will comment on this uh, a bit later on. So the typical fluctuations are not described by a Tracy rhythm distribution, which was called F2 before, but by a new uh, distribution, which is d minus. And d minus can again be written as a Fredholm determinant, and that's why I wanted to have it here. Uh, so if you look at the hard, the hard wall, hard wall case, 
uh, this d minus, uh, so you have uh, another Fredholm determinant. Uh, let me write it this way. Uh, so you have, uh, again, the, some projector PS. And then now you have, uh, okay, let me call it K for K hard edge. Now this K hard edge has, a, has the following expression here. Uh, so it's a combination of the sine kernel, but you have to subtract uh, a term which is basically the obtained from it by some image. So this is the image of that in some sense. I mean, there is some image method behind that. I will not comment on this. Uh, but this is, this is the kernel that you get, which is obviously different from this airy kernel, so you really have a completely different universality class. So this is actually uh, a special case of a Bessel kernel, I mean, for, for those of you uh, who know TRMT. Now, the left tail can also be, com can, can also be computed explicitly, and the result uh, is actually, so the, this d minus is this Fredholm determinant. It turns out that it, it, it has appeared before, I mean, in, in the, in, in some RMT uh, calculations uh, in, in the earlier works by Meta, Dyson, Godin, and, 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 and others. Um, there is a, a nice interpretation of this, but I will not come to that. Now, phi minus can also be uh, computed explicitly using Coulomb gas technique that uh, Bertrand uh, has also re reminded yesterday. And this, this is the result. But again, here you see that the scenario is, is, is relatively similar to the one that we had in the GUE. Uh, that means that we have a central part and we have a large deviation form and there is a smooth matching. You can show that there is a smooth matching between these two parts. Okay. So one typical, which is the equivalent of Tracy rhythm here, and then one left part, which is again of this form exponential minus n square. So this is in 1D, uh, and again, uh, you can also uh, claim that, or um, show that there is also some universality. That means you can add to this hard wall potential, you can add a smooth potential uh, to, these, to these guys. And again, if you look at the edge properties, you will uh, find uh, this, uh, this uh, hard edge uh, uh, kernel here. So there is again some universality. So I would say that you see that in 1D, uh, within, for, for this fermion problem, there is uh, essentially we have the, the various universality classes that uh, we have in, in RMT, so that, that, that the, the tools of RMT turned out to be extremely, to, extremely useful uh, to classify this uh, these uh, extreme value statistics and compute, in some cases, the, the large deviation functions. Now, this is in 1D, and uh, of course, as soon as you leave this uh, one-dimensional world, uh, you, things become uh, harder to some extent in the sense that you lose, usually you lose the connection to, uh, to RMT, but nevertheless, uh, you still have some uh, determinantal structure which are very useful to, to, uh, to analyze the, the, your problem. So, I will just uh, uh, show you some uh, recent results uh, for that, that, that we have obtained in one case, uh, which is quite simple, uh, which is the case of a spherical hard box. Okay, so that's a generalization of the, of the, of the minus R plus R box, but uh, in, uh, in D dimensions and keeping the spherical, the spherical symmetry. So this is your Hamiltonian. And uh, in this case, uh, the, 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 you can, of course, solve this problem uh, exactly. Uh, doing it, I mean, writing it explicitly is, is relatively simple. Now, doing the large end analysis is, is, is something much harder. But the, the result uh, is something that, so let looks, let's look, just illustrate the things that uh, in D equal to. So you are in 2D, right? So you, are X, you have, say, X1, X2. And uh, what, what, what is happening is that, well, uh, you will have, so you have a hard, you have a hard uh, spherical box, okay? So that means that your, your particles are confined within this, uh, within this, uh, this uh, disk, okay? And uh, of course, uh, in the large end limit, uh, what is happening is that if you are far away from the edge, the density again is uniform. But close to the edge, uh, uh, there, there is some non-trivial physics. And uh, again, you can uh, describe the correlations in terms of a non-trivial kernel 
which you can also obtain using the method of images that I will not, uh, I will not describe this here because it, it, it would take too, too much time. But I will just focus on what happens to the, uh, the, the distribution of the, of the farthest fermions. So before that, uh, it's, it's important to have in mind that uh, the typical scale of correlations is relatively narrow. That means that uh, if you look at, so you have your, your particles there, you have your fermions, and uh, there is a single scale of, of correlations uh, if you want in your, in your problem, and this scale uh, is just given by one over the Fermi wave vector, okay, one over kf, and it's just given by n to the power minus one over d. Okay, so that's quite, uh, quite narrow, and basically that means that, uh, uh, I just represent the things like this, uh, you have, say, uh, a, a typical scale, wn, uh, which, is, uh, which is quite, uh, quite small. That means that if you look at local correlations, basically if you look at two fermions which are far away uh, from, from far apart from n to the power 1 over d, uh, then basically they don't feel any correlations. They are not correlated. Okay? So what I want now to focus, so again, I mean, the story, I mean, discussing the correlations of this model is, is quite interesting, but uh, today, I mean, I will discuss this problem. Okay? So I want uh, instead to show you the results that we have for the, the, the farthest fermion in, in higher D. Okay, so I look at, this, at, this, at these guys there, and I just want, again, I look at a snapshot of, this, of these fermions, and I look at R max, okay? distribution of these of this R max. And I want to get the, the, the cumulative distribution function. Now, uh, the results, uh, uh, I will just sketch here the, 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 for you the, the results. Basically, um, the first thing uh, to notice that, 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 that we can show is that the typical regime is relatively simple. And there is a typical scale, which is not completely obvious, but which is of that form, 1 over n to the power d plus 2 over 3d. And it's just given by this exponential minus x cube. And this exponential minus x cube is actually a special case of a viable distribution. Now, to understand that, so this viable distribution is, why is it, uh, I mean, why should we uh, uh, think about it? Well, it's because this viable distribution is one of the distribution that arises when you look at the uh, extreme value statistics of IID random variables. Now, the reason is more or less already written there on, on, on the blackboard is that uh, you see that uh, we have a scale of correlations which is, uh, so let's look at the kind of uh, classical picture uh, we have this, uh, this Wn, which is very small there, uh, which is the, the scale of correlations. So what you, what you would like to do, uh, what you can do is just to divide uh, your, your system in uh, angular sectors. Okay, each one having, uh, etc. Each one having length of scale Wn. And now within each sector, uh, you can look at the farthest fermion. Okay, so you look at the farthest fermion in this in this sector there. It will be it will be here, then this one will be there, and it. Uh, okay, and then of course the global maximum that you are after is just the maximum among all these uh, these these guys, and because of the correlations have decayed, that means that because of this sector here is essentially independent of that one you will expect that in the large n limit, the distribution of R max will be given by uh, the, 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 the extreme value statistics of IID random variables. Now, here, uh, within each sector, of course, the distribution of R max is bounded because you have a hard wall at R, so R max is necessarily uh, smaller uh, than R. And that means that you are in this... Uh, in the, uh, in, the viable, in the viable case. And that's why, that's why you get this. Now the cube here is a bit more, you need more information to get the cube. You need to know how the density vanishes close to the, close to the, to the boundary. Uh, but this is something that essentially you can guess uh, more or less without any computation. So that's, that's the one. Now, there is, on the other hand, there is a large deviation regime, which is uh, the analog of the large deviation regime that we had uh, in RMT. So it's described by a, a rate function phi d of m, uh, which uh, actually turns out to be very hard to compute. So there is, at the moment, there is no, not a single model where we are able to compute this phi d of m explicitly. 
But if you look at this, I mean, okay, of course, you, you, you need to, to, to know to, to, to look a, a bit more at, at the details of this, uh, of this phi d of m and this guy there. But essentially, what you realize is that there is a problem of matching. And uh, the reason is that there is, in fact, an intermediate regime between this typical regime and the large deviation regime, which is described by uh, this form here and with a non-trivial uh, non uh, function gd of s, uh, just for uh, curiosity. Uh, turns out that this gd of s uh, can be expressed as a, in the func as a function of d minus. Okay, just, uh, so it just has uh, this formula, right? So, so it's, you can express it as an integral which involves the log of this Fredholm determinant, uh, but yet the argument uh, is not uh, completely trivial. Uh, that's like this, and basically you, you can get uh, the asymptotic behavior. Uh, so it goes like uh, S cubed when S goes to zero. I mean, of course, uh, you have to work a little bit to get this. Uh, and, and like X, S square when S uh, goes to plus infinity. Right. So with this, uh, so that's the picture that we have uh, for, this, uh, for this model. Uh, and essentially, uh, you can indeed show that with, with this, uh, with this uh, uh, behavior that I've shown there, you can indeed show that uh, these three regimes are actually matching. Okay, so uh, this is the typical regime. This is the viable regime. This is the large deviations regime. And in between, you have this intermediate one. Now, you see that if you set d equal to 1, well, basically here, uh, you don't have really a large deviation, and there is no, no intermediate deviation in 1d. And essentially, what is happening is that these two regimes are merging, and you only have two regimes in 1d, one typical and a large deviations one. As soon as you get to, to, to higher d, uh, that's, that's what, that, that's what, you, that's what you, you obtain here. And that's, uh, uh, that's what we recently obtained in this paper with uh, Satya. Uh, Pierre and, and Bertrand, who was here. Now, this actually, if you, because uh, I'm running out of time, so I will, uh, the sketch of the derivation will not be a sketch. I mean, the, I think that uh, I just want to, maybe I, I will go very fast, but I, at least want to show you one thing is that this model has actually, at least formally, has some similarity with the, uh, the, the problem that Bertrand was discussing yesterday uh, for Geneva random matrices. In the sense that, well, first, I mean, the, the, the final result was that indeed there was an additional intermediate deviation in 2D in this case, in his case. Uh, it turns out that this, this, this model here can be uh, also written uh, as uh, uh, an extreme value problem, but for uh, random variables which are independent but not identical. Okay, so that uh, maybe I will just uh, discuss this uh, very quickly uh, if I have time. So. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so the, 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 the derivation is based on this, on this uh, rather uh, detailed review. I mean, uh, many information at least can be, can be shown there. Uh, for the extreme value statistics, uh, we had written this uh, quite detailed paper, uh, which concerns the case uh, of the harmonic potential. And now there is this more recent one for, for the hard world case, which I discussed uh, ultimately. Uh, so maybe... Uh, I've tried to show you, to, 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 to discuss this. Uh, um, you have seen here in this semi-classical picture that we wanted to do this uh, decomposition in different radial sectors. Now, what is happening in, your, uh, in, in the quantum model is that your, the quantum states eventually are described by two quantum numbers, uh, in this case, which are denoted by N and L. I mean, if you, these are the, for, for the, if, you, if you have the hydrogen atom in mind, I mean, that would be the standard N and L, uh, N and L guys, quantum numbers. And you look at the level in this NL space. Okay, so uh, you have these different levels. So L is, the, uh, is again, the orbital uh, quantum number, and N is a, is a radial quantum number. So what you can show is that the, uh, the, the, if you look at the extreme value statistics, uh, the different sectors, the different L sectors, simply decouple. That means that you can view your, your system as a collection of one-dimensional fermions. So this is, uh, this is a one-dimensional fermion, which corresponds to a fixed L, 
and it has typically ML fermions, but all these L sectors are completely decoupled from the point of view of the extreme value statistics. That means that if you look at the cumulative distribution of the maximum, well, it has this simple factorized, factorized form. So GD of L is just a, a degeneracy factor. That means that uh, this L here has some degeneracy. So for instance, uh, in, yeah, okay, so that's, that's just the, in, in 3D, I mean, we know that the degeneracy is just 2L plus 1, right? Because you have M, the azimuthal uh, quantum number, M, which is in between minus 7 plus L, so you have an additional degeneracy. So each of these L sectors are actually de degenerate, so that's the origin of this guy. But this QL there, this QL, is, uh, you can interpret it uh, as the, uh, the cumulative distribution of the rightmost fermion uh, among ML fermions in an effective hard box 1D potential. So that's given by this determinant here, which you can also uh, express as a Fredholm determinant uh, eventually. But the, the, the idea is that basically the, the, this classical picture here that I, that I tried to sketch here, uh, actually uh, it, can be, it can be made much more uh, precise. And uh, the way it works is that, uh, again, these different uh, angular momentum sectors are completely, completely independent, uh, and uh, eventually uh, that gives rise to this. So you see that you, have, you can write this cumulative distribution as the product of cumulative distribution, but each of these, in each of these sectors, of course, the distribution is different, right? So each of these QL explicitly depends on L. So that means that this, the, 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 the distribution, the cumulative distribution of R max, or R max itself, can be seen as the maximum of independent but non identically distributed random variables. So a bit like uh, it, it was the case in the Geneva and Geneva random matrices. So now what you have to do is really to, to, to perform the, the large end analysis, and uh, this, this of course is non-trivial, but eventually this, this leads to this, uh, to this picture. Okay, so let me briefly uh, uh, conclude. Uh, so the first uh, message I think is that uh, uh, that, 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 that the physics at the edge of these fermions, fermionic systems, is actually quite rich, and it can be described in, in, in quite details uh, uh, using the, either RMT methods in 1D or determinantal processes uh, in higher dimensions. So in 1D, I showed you that there are some cases where there is a direct connection, one-to-one -one mapping between non-interacting fermions and uh, matrix ensembles in 1D. Harmonic potential is connected to GUE. If you have a hard wall, then you end up with this Jacobi unitary ensemble. In more generally, you can uh, look at uh, using, you can use determinantal techniques. I have not shown you really what this is, but essentially, this, this fermionic system, uh, of course, you lose the connection to RMT, but still all the correlation functions can be expressed as determinants, and therefore, uh, you can use uh, the techniques uh, from, from, that, uh, from that field. Uh, I've shown you that in, in higher dimensions, uh, there is a rich and quite unusual uh, large deviations for the extreme statistics, and in particular with this intermediate regime, which to some extent uh, seems to be rather, uh, rather universal uh, when you look at the, um, the maximum of uh, independent but non-identically distributed random variables, although we know some counterexamples. So uh, it's not uh, uh, a fully generic structure, uh, a feature, but still uh, it seems to show up quite frequently in that case. Uh, I've sticked here to, uh, to a t equals zero, uh, but you can also address uh, various interesting questions and uh, uh, large deviation f uh, questions at finite temperature, and this is what we have done recently uh, with Satya Majumdar and uh, with Satya, who's here, sorry, and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and Jacek uh, Grela, uh, who is postdoc with us, and this would be uh, recently published in PRL. Uh, this is already published, actually. Um, okay, and now, of course, I mean, uh, we are physicists, and uh, uh, that would be nice to, 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 to observe, I mean, at least one of these properties, I mean, of course, use, observing uh, this uh, intermediate regime of large deviations in these cold atom experiments is probably uh, uh, completely, uh, completely science fiction at the moment, but but nevertheless, uh, there are certainly other properties, in particular if you look at the correlations uh, in these models, uh, that could be observed in cold atom experiments. And, uh, okay, we are currently dis discussing with several groups. Uh, one, one is the, the group of Emmanuel Bloch in Munich that I mentioned, and the other one is the group of uh, Christophe Salomon at, uh, at Ecole Normale. 
So, okay, we hope that it will stimulate some further research in this, uh, in this field. Okay, thank you for your attention. I guess, I mean, uh, it's very hard to get it in 1D. Precisely. That's true, yes. Find it in you know, one of the dimensions. Right, so, yeah, so usually, I mean, what they, what they like to do is to, is to do two-dimensional experiments. This is usually what they like to do. But they can also do uh, 1D, in fact. So they first look at the 2D system, and then uh, they basically create some one-dimensional arrows. And they really look at the statistics along these arrows. So they are, they, 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 they it's, it's in principle, it's, 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 it's really possible to, to observe this, this 1D, 1D statistics. But uh, is it a truly 1D system, or? Uh, well, I mean. I what, what my question is going to, is about is that, when you look at the rightmost fermion or something, yeah. that would be affected by whether you are actually in 1D or not in 1D. Right? There, there would be a crossover from like Weibull to Tracy Widenberg. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so this we have not, yeah, that, that, that's true. So this, okay, there, there, would, there could be various ways to do that, but basically, I mean, one way to do this would be to, uh, I mean, basically what they are doing is that you look at the 2D system, but very anisotropic one, right? So. So that's, in the, and in this way, uh, you could indeed uh, observe this, this, this transition from, from 1D to 2D. This, this we have not done, but that's something that in principle could be done. Yeah, it's very smaller than you, you will get this. That's true. Yeah. yeah, okay, so that's a good question. So, this, yes, so in this case, we use a method that, that, I, that I not had time to discuss, but um, so basically what, the, 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 what, what, what is universal, what we can show is universal, is the, is the correlation kernel. So you look at the kernel, so the correlation kernel, you can always write it explicitly in terms of the, of the, of the wave function. Okay, it's just the sum of the psi k, psi k, psi k star. Now, it turns out that uh, you can represent this, uh, this, um, this kernel in terms of the propagator of, of, of your model. Okay. And this propagator, uh, you can write it um, as a path integral, if you want. And what, what you can show is that in the large end limit, you are interested in the small time expansion of, of, this, uh, of this propagator. And this small time expansion, you can work it out explicitly uh, using this path integral formalism, if you want. Path integral. Sorry? Yeah, exactly. And the universality, of course, only, only happens, only occurs either uh, in the bulk or at the edge, but, but on local scale, right? So for instance, the, the density obviously uh, is, not, is not universal, but if you really look at local correlations, there they become universal. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay, so, so there, uh, what you can show is that, well, okay, square box is, uh, you can, what, what you can study, uh, again, is the, is the, so if you take any, any, any domains, if you want, like this, uh, and you want to look at the correlations uh, close to the edge, so you want to look at the kernel there. So indeed, what, what, what is happening is that the method of image, so you see that there is a method of image here, right? In 1D, it's pretty explicit, right? Then in 2D, I mean, there will be a method of image, but uh, with respect to the tangent plane, okay? And then you will look at the, the image of this guy with respect to this. So you would have, say, X uh, and Y, and then you will have, uh, if you want, uh, a y prime. And basically, the, the, the correlator uh, for the two point, the, 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 this kernel, you will have a bulk part which involves x and y, and minus the image counterpart which involves x and y prime. Yeah, I mean, so this is true only locally. I mean, you need some, okay, so some smoothness, okay? It has to be twice differentiable, basically, so, such that you can do an expansion close to that. Uh, but this only involves the, well, this is, yeah, exactly, this involves the curvature. Yeah, so corner, corner is different. But you can still do that, so, so that means that if you have points like that, I mean, with some angle there, uh, things will be, will be different. But, I mean, to, 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 tell, to answer fully your question, in these cases, we have not investigated the, 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 the distribution of the, of the large, I mean, of X max. What I expect, of course, is that, okay, it will be, I mean, if you, if you look at, I don't know, some, some reference place, I mean, of course, uh, the, the, the maximum will be close to the point which is the farthest from the origin, and then you should be able to express it again, yeah, exactly, as a Fredholm determinant of this local guy. But we have not worked out this in, in, full, in full detail. Are there other questions? Comments? Okay, thank you.